Now, many have come to agree that indeed superstition exists in football as well as any other sporting event. On the contrary, others have debunked the notion. But the question is, what is the truth in this as far as the game of football is concerned? Watch this. <music> Superstition and football have been bedfellows from time immemorial, though some teams have been accused of engaging in superstitious activities to win a game. Pandits say it is an outmoded culture, whilst others say no, it is not, it does exist. With Octopus Paul receiving a 100% prediction rate at the last FIFA World Cup in South Africa, many have come to believe in superstitious activities in football, popularly called juju in Ghana. In the past, according to football analysts, this situation was absolutely massive and prevalent. Many spring to mind 1985 uh, African then called African Champions Cup. Accra had to work well playing a Senegalese team. I can't remember the night in Jarab, so I can't remember the exact thing. And I don't know whether the Juju man had told them not to shake the hands of the officials. So all the 16 players, when the officials were coming, the players put their hands behind their back and they just bow. And then, at the end of the day, they were told to put four eggs in the four corner quadrants of the field of play. And that's exactly what happened. They, at the end of the day, yes, they won just by one goal, but they didn't qualify. So this should tell you something. Asante Kotoko have been involved in it as well. I've seen ridiculous things happen. Though there have been rumors of teams or football fans believing in such supernatural influences, others have debunked the notion. I don't believe in Juju. Football is about strategy and luck. These two things, you need to plan well. And if you have luck on that day, fine, you win. They exist, you know, just like the influence of spiritism and, you know, other evil forces exist in other areas of human endeavor. If Juju plays a match, then the people from the north have the best balance. So why is it that their teams normally go on relegation? It's the same in the Volta region. If really it is true, then most World Cups would have been won by Indians. But I tell you, superstition does not play football. It's not outmoded because it's still a belief a lot of people hold in sports. It's not just one team, all the teams hold that same belief. I can confidently tell you that there was a match going on here and a losing team chased a cut here because they believed that it was a cut that was really causing their problem. And it was so unfortunate. Basically, superstition is a widely held by irrational belief in supernatural influences, especially as bringing good or bad luck. Not too long ago, the two famous local clubs in Ghana, Accra House of Oaks and Asante Kotoko's match at the Accra Sports Stadium was the talk of town. Due to the fact that the Phobians before kick-off clouded themselves in their flag, which many saw as superstitious. Very many teams in Ghana in their budget, always have something called a budget line called ways and means. The day before the match, they will go to the Malam, uh, they will burn incense, and uh, they will come together and sing and shout and all that. That is very important for those because it gives them psychological reinforcement. A sports analyst, Veronica Komi, tells me how these two clubs have been consistently accused of such acts. It was never substantiated, but there was this rumor, and it grew louder, that Asante Kotoko, after one season, had a budget, and they, they claimed that they, they used so much money for juju, as they like to call it. And I think that if you trace the fact that each time a car has a book is going to play, especially when they have a very difficult game, they dress up in this place at New Town, a place they call the shrine then you cannot dispute the fact that football and superstition definitely would go together how much attention do coaches pay to these things 
We don't. As far as I'm concerned, I, I, I don't give attention to it at all. I just pray to the Almighty God. He has absolute control over everything, even the devil himself. So I focus on the ethics of my profession. I mean, we have to train. If we don't train, nothing else can help us. It's not about just doing anything and it's not about just also praying. It's about a combination of all of it, you know, in the right proportions. Footballers who have made it to the very top say getting preoccupied with juju without training is a waste of time. So, is training alone enough for a team to excel? Football is all about hard work, skill, determination, as well as a God-given talent. It is not about superstitious beliefs. They better learn to put their faith in one, the Almighty God, and more importantly, two, with their training sessions. If you haven't put in the necessary effort, if you haven't got the good players, if you haven't put the necessary administrative tactics in place, you ain't going to win a football match. It's as black and as white as it can be. Indeed, come to think of it, if you don't have stamina, if you are unfit, if your coach is unable to get it right in terms of tactics and all you have is juju, it won't fly. Training alone is not enough for teams to win a game. Have the teams considered the financial implications and the spiritual aspect of the whole thing? I am here with three young men who play for Accra House of Oak who will tell us more about whether superstition really plays a role in our football today. In football it's all about strength. You need to train hard to be fit. And I think superstition plays a very big role in, in our football now. You can hear from the radios, uh, the team going to some places to win matches. Before even when the match is not yet played. You see TMs giving things to, to the players to drop in the post for goals. And training does not always do everything. As for those things, you know, yeah, it's just you yourself you know, to psych yourself out. Me, I for instance, I pray a lot. And I used to fast every Saturday before I go in for a match. And you are here telling me, say, you go for some place to do those things, to put something in your captain van for you to help you to score a goal. Why, then why, why do you throw? But now, we ask a general question to all of them, whether it is ever possible to do away with superstition in our football. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can. Because we, when, whenever you go and see a mala, you spend money. That's, that's how I say, you spend money. Why don't you give the money to the players to, to, to buy Lucuzade, this? drinks or boots for them to, to, to perform better instead of wasting money on, on unnecessary things. I believe it doesn't work. When we are going to play and you give us money, hey, my boy, take this and give it to and I think everything will be okay because players, we like money. Because it's money that, because of money that we are working. It can never be raised, um, both in Africa and you. you can, I can cite uh, Liverpool as an example. Before you walk through the tunnel, you have to tie the crest of Liverpool. It's, it's an example, it's just superstition. But again, having said this, one cannot underestimate the fact that superstition holds a significant space in our football life and also has financial implications as well as spiritual. So whether superstition exists in football or not, lies with you to judge. Rebecca Iwa, GBC24, Accra.